Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to talk about battery health as I get questions about this every single day. The battery health that's within the battery on the iPhone where it gives you your maximum capacity. And currently this is my 10s Max, it's at 100% and people are always asking me what I do to maintain that so well. So there's a couple things and some people may or may not agree with me, but I've done quite a bit of research on this from different websites such as Popular Mechanics and PC Magazine to things like Battery University and other documents from professors as well. So what you'll find though is when you ask a battery expert, some people say one thing, some other people say another thing. So I'll give you what I do to maintain that battery health number. So the first thing you need to understand is batteries are in a constant state of decay. They decrease size over time. So unlike your vehicle's fuel tank, if you have a 10 gallon fuel tank, it will always be 10 gallons, but on an iPhone or a battery that 10 gallons over a year may shrink down to nine gallons. And then after two years could be eight gallons and over time it degrades enough to where it can't fuel the power needed from the iPhone. So that's what's happening with battery health and what that's actually measuring its full ability to hold the original capacity. Now, Apple says that after 300 to 500 cycles, you should be able to get about 80% of your original charge still. So a cycle is when you drain your battery from 100% down to zero and then bring it back up. You've cycled the battery. Now, if you're only draining the battery 20% and bringing it back up, that's not a full cycle. That's only about a fifth of a cycle or 20% of a, of a full cycle. So those don't count as full cycles. The math is a little bit fuzzy depending on who you ask, but it's basically, if you drain it down 50%, charge it, drain it again, 50%. Now that you've got a full cycle. Now, the number one thing that affects iPhones over time is heat. So if you're in an environment where it's constantly around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that's going to be more of a factor in degrading the battery than charging it. So if you're going to drain that battery down and charge it, that's okay. But if you're in a hundred degree heat, it's going to degrade the actual chemical physical ability for that battery to maintain its charge over time. So I wanted to show you my examples of 100% here on the iPhone 10 after one year of use, I've got 90% or 97% left. And then on the iPhone 6S Plus, after a few years of use, it's at 86%. So these are all doing really well after that amount of time. Now this meter is here to tell you whether or not your battery can maintain its peak performance over time and supply all the voltage needed. If it's bad, it will come up and tell you that it's bad. So let me show you what I do to maintain it. And this is where it gets a little controversial because some people don't like this, but in a battery of this size, we're not talking about a battery for a vehicle like a Tesla. This is a battery that's small and really the best thing to do I've found is charge it overnight. Now people are going to say, don't do that. And here's, let me explain that a little bit. And there's, this is what a lot of people say. This is the charger I use. I use a wireless charger. I set it here overnight and let it charge. Once it hits 100%, Apple actually cuts the voltage. They regulate the voltage coming into the phone. They'll pull back the voltage and just trickle charge it to keep it at 100%. Much like you had a battery tender on a car or recreational vehicle or whatever you're using. Same idea. So it trickle charges, it keeps it up there. And many experts, I'd say most of them that I've found say that it's far better to leave it like that than it is to actually drain it down to say 70 or 80% and charge it back up over and over and over. The other thing I do is while I'm driving throughout the day, this will be plugged in and I'll be using Apple CarPlay. Now you don't have to use Apple CarPlay. You could plug it in while you're driving that will charge the battery. It's much better to charge the battery in small increments throughout the day than it is to let it drain all the way down and charge it back up. So that's really all I'm doing is I'm leaving it on a charger overnight. It's not a fast charger and I wouldn't recommend using a fast charger regularly. The iPad charger is an excellent charger to use regularly. And that's what I used for years until the wireless charger that I just showed you here actually came to market. So before iPhones had that ability, I used the iPad charger. That's not really a fast charger. It's just a little bit faster charger. A true fast charger will push a lot more power into this. Like you see on other Android phones, you can use a MacBook charger to charge this more quickly, but it's still not on the same level as some of the other phones. So I would recommend using an iPad charger if you want a little quicker charge or the original one included. So that's why my battery health is so good. I know a lot of people are going to say, don't charge it overnight, only charge it to 80%. And most people I've 
heard talk about this or read about have said it's far too much of a pain to do that with an iPhone and you don't need to because the size of the battery, it doesn't matter anyway. If you're using a car like a Tesla with a huge battery, it's much better to keep it between 40 and 80% over time so that you maintain it over that length of time. But with a phone, you're getting rid of it in a year or two and then it's getting refurbished or you're selling it off and that person can replace the battery fairly inexpensively. But still after years, I'm only down to 86% on the 6s plus. So it really just depends on what you do. Fully cycling that battery over and over is far worse. Just plug it in, use it and enjoy it. And you'll maintain that battery health just like I do. Let me know what you think though, in the comments below, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.